Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast and the Recenter with Christ app, episode 594. Persevere in faith after being reconciled and no longer an enemy in our minds. I got a Christian meditation on Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 through 24. My name is Chaplain Jared, and I do this podcast to help you find more peace in your life by connecting with the true source of peace, who is Jesus Christ. I do that through a couple styles of meditation. This one is a guided Lectio Divina style meditation. I'll walk you through several different pieces of meditation. If you want something with more open space or silence, I also offer free form meditations, which are a little bit more of that. For now, though, let us dedicate our hearts and our minds and our time to the Lord. Dear God, bless us now that as we meditate on your word, we can do so while being aware of the goodness and love you have for us and that it will illuminate our minds. And this we say in Jesus' name, amen. These moments of, of, these moments of calm are a beautiful gift, an opportunity for you to slow down and embrace the peace that God offers. God loves you. God knows your current struggles. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your future. He knows your past. And he accepts you and loves you. Breathe in that peace and allow any stress or tension from this world to fade away. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Embrace that peace. Allow it to Wash away the tension you may carry somewhere in your body, some muscle group, some joint. Allow that tension to unflex or release or dissipate. Rejoice in peace. You are reconciled to God. You are not an enemy to God once you embrace that faith and continue in the faith of Christ. You are not an enemy to God. each passing breath, you feel a little bit more calm enter your body. Right now, you feel a little bit more calm than you did at the beginning of this meditation, and with each passing breath, that feeling expands. How glorious and wonderful it is that God offers that peace to you. Build your life on that foundation, the foundation of a loving, perfect God who has reconciled you, an enemy to him, has reconciled you to him. What a glorious foundation for our faith. Now let us read from Scripture. Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 through 24, first from the NIV. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy 
in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Continue reflecting on this scripture. now from the NABRE version. And you who were once alienated and hostile in mind because of evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through his death to present you holy without blemish and irreproachable before him, provided that you persevere in the faith firmly grounded, stable, and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, am a minister. Continue reflecting on this scripture. Evil deeds are in opposition to God. Without his reconciliation, this is what we are left with. Any quantity of sin would make us enemies to or hostile to his purity. As you heard this, don't give in to the temptation of shame and self-doubt. God's plan for us is not that we are overcome with self-hatred, It's much better to embrace the love of a perfect God that has offered a solution for that shame. There is no shame in the pure grace of God. There is no self-hatred in the grace of God. If God himself, creator of the universe, author of all holiness, the being responsible for your existence and intimately familiar with your failings and your deeds, all of them. If God himself can love you, there is no use to hate on ourselves for our weakness. 
The invitation of this scripture is not to feel more guilt or shame. It is to embrace the love of God in the rejection of all things that would separate us and our hearts from him. Embrace the love of God and remain firmly grounded in that faith. A profound truth here is that we can be stable and firmly grounded in that knowledge. Not because we are flawless in our faith or the execution of avoidance of sin, but because that grace is rock solid. The love God offers will never falter. A building built upon bedrock is strong because the bedrock is strong, not because the building itself, but based on what it's built on. You can take the strongest building in the world and put it on sand and it will suffer. God's love and the grace he offers through the atonement of Jesus Christ is the bedrock of our faith. Persevere in that faith. Receive God's grace as you turn to him and abandon everything that would separate your heart from him. Continue pondering this message. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, unite our hearts with yours. Guide us in the things that we can do or follow that would improve our lives. Show us the blessings that you offer and help us receive them and see them. Our human eyes are weak at times and our hearts fail. But through you, we can do all things. So inspire us and strengthen us. Give us courage and help us receive of your grace as we turn from all sin. And this we say in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to continue in prayer. Now, sit in contemplative silence before the Lord.
now for the application phase. I want you to summarize and visualize. Summarize what things you've learned, experienced, or reflected upon here. And then visualize a future where you imp- apply those things in your life to change and improve your world and the world around you. To change and improve your life and the world around you. To bless others. Thank you for joining me today, as always. I felt a strong connection with these words. And I feel that this message can bless many people. So please share it with those who you think would benefit from it. You can do so by sharing the website, christianmeditationpodcast.com, sharing the podcast and whatever mechanism you found it, or sharing the free iOS and Android app called Recenter with Christ. I have a reflection here and then a final question for you. I did a repeat of this first verse because it's pivotal in both the previous and this message. At times when we are failing, at times when we don't do the things we should, we can feel weak, we can feel as though we are enemies to God. But God offers a solution. He loves you, He cares about you, He knows what you need to do. Even as we go through hardship generated by other people, Many times, even within us, there are failings that we can correct. And as we do so, we approach the image that God has for us and for you. May his love inspire you to constantly turn back to him. God loves you. Pour that love out on others as well. My final question for you is this. As you consider the invitation and command to persevere in faith, what changes in your life would that bring to mind? I want you to ponder that. God loves you. He cares about you. He wants the best for you, and that best will include change. And this I say in Jesus' name, amen. And this I say, amen.